Welcome to Two Guys in a Podcast. I'm Tom. Today I'm going to do a quick recap of the Detroit Lions victory over the Atlanta Falcons today. So stand by while I get after it. Shut up and sit down. All right, I'm back. Okay, so Lions fan, uh, I get it. I'll wait. Are you done? Okay, now let's be serious. So the Lions won today. Uh, they're they are three and three on the season. They should woulda shoulda coulda been better. Uh, they should have not lost to the Bears. That's for darn sure. Uh, so anyway, last second heroics, last second failures from Atlanta. I guess we would say. With a minute four left, they score a touchdown, which they didn't intend to score. The Lions let them score. Uh, it was still a mental error by Todd Gurley to actually score and give the ball back to Detroit, only up by six. So with uh, 64 seconds left, Matthew Stafford carves up the Atlanta Falcons, goes downfield, and from inside the, right in, in the red zone, right around the 10 or 11 yard line, I think, 9 or 10 or 11 yard line, um, Stafford with like two seconds left in the game hits Hawk for a touchdown boom uh, extra point becomes interesting because Amendola removed his helmet and incurred a 15 yard penalty on the extra try so it was a 47 yard extra point but Prater being Prater uh, put it through with no questions and the Lions win 23-22 with no time on the clock so pretty awesome Matthew Stafford again with 30, 30 some odd Fourth quarter comebacks, um, most in the NFL since maybe 2012, something like that. I don't know. Anyway, a lot. Um, has also lost a lot, and the team has lost a lot, but I'm still a diehard Lions fan and and still, uh, you know, still will root for him. So Stafford was 25 of 36 for 340 yards, 9.4 yard average, uh, one touchdown. That one touchdown being the game winner. Whereas Matt Ryan, his good friend from down in Georgia, uh, 31 of 42 for 338 yards, eight yard average, one touchdown. He was sacked twice for 16 yards. Stafford was sacked twice for 18 yards. Stafford had a 108.6 rating and Matt Ryan had a 105.1 rating. So both quarterbacks played very, very well. Uh, no interceptions. Matt Ryan did have a force fumble. They, the Lions got a force fumble on uh, Matt Ryan, which was a very, very big play in the game. So the Atlanta did have one turnover. Um, Todd Gurley, 23 carries for 63 yards, 2.7 yard average for two touchdowns, a long of 13. So once again, back-to-back -back weeks, the Lions defense really actually shuts down in the running game. First four games of the year, they were giving up 170 yards per, per uh, of rushing per game. Um, the last two, they've, they've only given up 66, and I think last week they only gave up maybe 30 or 40. Uh, it was pretty good back-to-back -back defensive efforts on running. On actually pretty good running backs um, whereas Detroit only rushed for for a three three yard average <laughs> 21 rushes for 64 yards with Adrian Peterson having 29 and DeAndre Swift having 27 DeAndre Stiff, Swift did score a touchdown uh, rushing touchdown on a uh, drive that was extended from a penalty um, roughing the passer uh, the, the announcers were saying it was controversial it wasn't controversial you're not allowed to hit the quarterback in the head or neck area period bottom line period doesn't matter not allowed to hit him there. And they did. The guy launched, actually. hit him right in the, right under the chin. So it was an obvious penalty. The people that are crying that it wasn't, uh, you, you're, just, you're just crying. You're just crying to cry. So, and trust me as a Lions fan, I know all about that. So, finally, a couple calls go their way. Kenny Galladay, though, big day for Detroit. Six receptions for 114 yards. That guy caught everything. He had vacuum hands today. Made some unbelievable catches. 19-yard uh, average. Uh, along of 29, he was targeted seven times, right? Marvin Jones kind of voicing an opinion of not being involved much in the offense. Uh, was involved early, five catches for 80 yards, 16-yard average, long of 23, six targets. Um, and Danny Amendola had three for 62. One, uh, two, two made really big, important catches in the game. One, he was wide open uh, for, for a 36-yard gain, and the other one was uh, on the last drive with a minute left. He made a huge catch, went up high to get it. Uh, huge, it was like the third... Third to last play of the game. That was huge to keep that drive going and get him down closer. Hawkinson, five catches for 59 yards. 
and a touchdown, uh, the game winner. Um, so awesome. It was a good day all the way, all the way across. Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different receivers caught passes. Uh, same for Atlanta. Julio Jones led the away for Atlanta, eight receptions for 97 yards. Um, he was quiet for most of the game. Second half, he started opening up a little bit. Ryan, um, Ryan, Matt Ryan actually started hitting him pretty well in the second half. Uh, the Detroit Lions defense kind of played a bend but don't break defense, which they didn't give up any big plays. Um, the longest play that they gave up was a 28-yard reception to Julio Jones. Um, he was targeted nine times, had eight receptions. So, all in all, good day. Uh, Matt Prater missed a couple 50-yard field goals, which is unfortunate. Um, but he hit him when he counted, uh, hit a, hit a uh, couple key field goals in the game, and then obviously the extra point to win it with no time on the clock. So, recapping again, Detroit Lions, 3-3 three and three on the season. Um, 23 Falcons one and six on season. They're a better team than one and six. They're just they're just struggling. They've fired their coach. They fired their GM. Uh, this new guy they got for coaching, I think he I think I think he's going to do good. I, I hope they consider hiring him because I think the team responded pretty well to him. Um, I think he's a pretty good coach. So it'd be interesting to see if they hire him on, at least for the rest of the year. Keep him around for the rest of the year for sure, um, and then consider him for head coaching. Uh, he seems like a very uh, uh, capable coach. Um, GM, we'll see what they do there. Um, so far, Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia are safe again for another week in Detroit. I'm going to still say they're on the hot seat. Uh, Matt Patricia, at least, is still on the hot seat for sure. If he can keep the team playing, especially the defense, the way they're playing. Um, now, granted, they're not playing the greatest competition, right? Jacksonville last week, Atlanta this week. I get that, but it is the NFL, and it's any given Sunday, right? So you can lose any given day. And the Detroit Lions, historically, w would have lost one of these two games, right? Uh, win the games you're supposed to win, except that if you're Detroit, and then you lose the games you're supposed to win. You'll go out and beat the Patriots in a Super Bowl year for the Patriots, but you'll lose to the Jets or somebody that you should have beaten, right? So, uh, anyway, there it is. So, again, one turnover, or two turnovers, technically, Um well, two fumbles for Atlanta, only one turnover. Uh, Todd Gurley actually fumbled, but he recovered it um, down near the goal line, I think, or first, for a first down um, on that final drive, I believe. No turnovers for Detroit. Sacks? Sacks. Detroit had two, and Atlanta had two. QB hits, six for both teams. I mean, if you really look at the stats for the whole game, uh, it was pretty even. Really, really, really pretty even, actually. Scary how close they were, right? So passing was was uh, 322 to 322 net yards, um, but 340 to 338 for the quarterbacks. Running was 21 carries for 64 yards, 26 carries for 66 yards. Um, receiving, again, three passing yards for the quarterbacks, 340 to 338. Uh, all in all, it was a pretty... pretty um, Pretty evenly scored game, pretty evenly played game. Um, the one turnover was critical, and um, obviously the touchdown at the end by Gurley. He tried. He, he he was running for the end zone. Detroit kind of made an effort, but let him go. And then he tried to stop to get down, so they could have just knelt the game down and kicked the winning field goal. Um, Detroit was only up by two at the time, I think. But instead, he scored. He, as he fell forward, the ball broke the plane, scored a touchdown. They went for two, went up six. I don't, I, I guess it, I guess playing for the tie if Detroit missed an extra point or something, I don't, under, didn't understand that logic, but, you know, didn't force Detroit to have to go for two, only forced them to hit an extra point, which is pretty common in the NFL, but anyway, uh, they went up six with a minute four left, and Detroit carved them up, went downfield, and uh, scored to win. So, Detroit is uh, in third place behind Chicago and Green Bay, uh, Chicago and Green Bay are both five and one. Um, Green Bay might be 6-1 and one now. They won big today again, too. Can't remember, and I think Chicago plays on Monday Night Football against the Rams. So let's hope for a Rams victory there. But they're crawling back into it. Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty good game today. It was pretty entertaining. It was, it was really fun. Uh, they went 75 yards on that last uh, drive with no timeouts, right? So that was pretty significant. And who do they got coming up next? They got the Colts coming up next, right? So the Colts are on a bye, I believe, this week. And uh, they are 4-2, uh, and two, I want to say, maybe. 
uh, with a bye this week. So they'll be coming off a bye. They'll be rested. They'll be ready to go. Uh, Detroit, a little banged up. Hopefully they get Trufant back next week. Um, maybe a couple other players. Uh, hopefully Kenny Galladay isn't banged up too bad. He was he was nursing a stinger, I think, in his elbow or his shoulder. Um, but made some hell of a catch today, man. I mean, he had some catches today that were just amazing. Uh, he, he's, you know, I'm anticipating he'll be fine. I'm anticipating the whole team will be fine. Hopefully the hamstring injury on Trufant will uh, will get better and he can play next week. Uh, but that'll be a big game because that's a, a team with a winning record that they're going to face here soon. After that, they have the Vikings, the Washington, and the Panthers. And Texans, which I think, I mean, I think the Panthers are either 500 or just, I know they lost today to the Saints. Um, so they're either 4-2 and two or 3-3, three and three, uh, something like that. Anyway, so they got some winnable games coming up, and they got a pretty easy schedule. So are the is Detroit a great team in the NFL? No, but they're an average team that has some opportunity in front of them. Um, could they could win three out of the next four, um, which would be pretty awesome. Put them at seven and four, right in the right in the playoff hunt. Say what you will. Then they finish they finish the year kind of the Bears twice or once one more time, the Packers one more time, um, and then the Buccaneers and then the Vikings. Uh, oh, and by the way, throw in throw in. The Titans in there, too, who got beat today for the first time, I believe. But Pittsburgh, who looks phenomenal. Um, so there you go. Again, recapping 23-22 Lions victory. Shout out out there to Luke G's field review. Um, Pre-game, post-game, uh, several several uh, broadcasters or, or, or podcasters or YouTubers on there. Uh, good, good channel to listen to before the game, after the game for Lions information. Um, also, Dosa Dion 2.0 is out there. Another good one, young kid uh, making a name for himself. Lions fan has a lot of content for the Lions. So both those channels are pretty awesome. And then, and then what um, Luke G does is have a whole bunch of other people that are Lions fans that that do do stuff on there, um, on his channel as well. So he gets he gets some pretty good uh, people on there. Three three one JMO, three three one three JMO, uh, Detroit Lions, uh, Detroit Drew, real Detroit fan Lions. Uh, real Detroit Lions fan. He gets several. He gets several guys on there uh, talking all the time. So every week, Luke G's field review and uh, Dosa Dion too. Uh, those are two good channels to look at before and after the games and throughout the week for content. So again, 23-22, Lions over Atlanta. Let's go. One pride.